Have you ever wondered how you could take your build from this to this? As is tradition in Clearwater County, whenever it's snowing by me, it's snowing in Clearwater County, and this is what it looks like for me today. So in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to convert your build to be a winter build. And then we'll continue developing in between our Costco and our tram line, filling in this area with higher density development, and clarifying what we meant to do here, considering I gave you a couple of different ideas. <laughs> And if you're excited about converting to winter, hit the like button. And if you hate it, hit the like button for that too and drop me a comment letting me know. Or if you'd rather, just drop me an emoji letting me know what your weather looks like today. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays where we are building Clearwater County, uh, except that we're on this menu. <laughs> so we're gonna convert our city to a snow build. So we are going to pop in here, look at our save, and the way that you would change this is by adding the environment changer mod. Now this will allow you to switch your base theme to whatever type of theme you want. In our case, we're gonna convert this to a winter theme. And then for the custom map theme, you could do this now, but I'm gonna recommend that you don't. We can change this using our theme mixer once we get in the game. But there are a few other mods that we're gonna add as well. We are adding disable snow parking. Now, what this mod does is if you're using parking lot roads and you, you notice that it has these big blocky snow squares, rectangles over all your parking stalls, this will eliminate that. So it will always be clear. So it's, it's just a, a quick fix, a visual thing. It just makes me feel good. So yeah, you can see here it is. That's what it'll look like if you don't have this mod. With this mod, clears it out. We're also gonna add in the pipe changer. Now this is just the quality of life mod. It's going to allow us to upgrade all of our water pipes, the heat pipes. Right now we're at 50-50 I'd say in the build, so this will just be a, a nice easy way to convert them all to heat pipes. Now this could convert them all back down to water pipes if you ever wanted to do that too. And then I'm adding in snowfall assets everywhere. Now this mod is not gonna help us today because we're converting this to a, a, a real winter build, but when we convert it back to a temperate build, this mod will ensure that all of our winter assets don't disappear because we are gonna be adding some. If you don't enable snowfall assets everywhere, all of these assets will disappear when you convert back to a temperate build. So this is not just a quality of life mod, this one is one that we absolutely need. So before you load into your save, I would recommend going in normally and saving it as a new build. So for me, I saved this already as Clearwater County 68 winter, and I'm going to load into there. Now, if I have any problems, which I did encounter some problems, at least I have a backup that I could go and revert back to. So I think it's about time that I load in and we'll see how this works. Okay, and with that, we are back in the build and it looks a little weird. <laughs> it looks like we have green roofs or something. Now, the reason for this is our theme is still set to the old Clearwater County theme. So we're gonna change that and that's by going into theme mixer and then we'll go to themes. Now, if you don't have any winter themes selected, you can just go ahead and use Colossal Orders winter theme and that will convert it over. Looks very dark, looks pretty bad. Uh, what we have to do then is go and adjust the at the atmosphere and the exposure. So now we can brighten that up and you could just call it a day if you wanted. But there are some other things that I think that you should do. So first of all, going into the terrain, the cliff texture really makes this build part of what it is. So I'm going to go click this button right here and then we can go and select from Italian Coast Exe's theme and you see that that changed the cliff texture. Now you could change any number of textures. It's really up to you. Now, once you're done with this, I would highly recommend you go into mixes and then save it with a new name. Now I've already done this, and now I will set use this as default so that over the next little while, it will load in looking like this and not like Clearwater County. Now, I still haven't resumed this, and there's one very, very, very specific reason, and that is that when I resumed this in the past, I had some issues with districts leveling up. So we want to prevent that from happening. So what I'm gonna do uh, is look at this. One of the reasons this was leveling up is some of the buildings were not historical. If you pop into a district like this, this is the level control mod, you can go to historical settings and make all of the buildings in this district historical by clicking on this. So now if we take a look, historical, historical, historical. Here is another district, Midtown. You'll see that some of these are not historical. Now I wanna look because I know that some of these are zoned in. And the last thing I wanna do, yeah, look at these, these are all zoned. I don't want to accidentally 
take zoned buildings and make them historical unless I'm okay with the block never changing. So maybe that's something that's desirable, but I, for the time being, I'm going to leave it as is. It's really these neighborhoods where I've plopped everything that I want things to remain as they were. So another neighborhood that I would want to take a look at right here. So let's see if we have a district here. We do. So interestingly, this is lower downtown. So I'm going to click on that and I, I want to really demonstrate what this does. So let's just say we take away this historical status here. We click on this force historical. All of these are historical now. So none of these will change. That was our goal. Okay, but we're still not ready. We've got to convert our water pipes. So we're going to use the pipe changer mod. This is alt D and it'll pull this up. So let's take a look at our pipes and see what we're looking at right here. We have regular old water pipes and that's fine, except that it's winter. And if we don't convert these, the heat will not s uh, spread over here. We will have to use electric heat. Boilers will not function. So I would prefer to use the boilers because it's going to use a lot less energy. So let's calculate the upgrade and it's going to cost us $1.1 $1 million. <laughs> we're going to do it because I think we have to. We have 8.4 million, so we're fine. We'll hit upgrade. There we go. Converted. Now, once we hit resume, the heat should spread over here and it says it upgraded 1,663 pipes. There you go. We are all set. And now I want to look at our heating and see if we have enough. So we'll go over to our heating option and we'll see that we're basically at an equilibrium. That's not good. <laughs> that means that when it gets really cold at night, we are going to have significant problems. So I want to come over here and I don't know what happened over here. I, I think I might have lost something uh, somewhere over the last year with the build. But what we're seeing is that uh, we could have more boilers right here and we don't. So we're going to add in some more heating options right here. So we've got two options available. We've got our geothermal heat. It provides 80 uh, megawatts of heat. And then we've also got our boiler station, which provides more, but pollutes. So I think that we're going to continue with our geothermal. That's what we've been doing. But I, I almost want to reorient this. I, I feel like we made a mistake. So I'm going to sever that. And we'll move this one right here. And then for the extra overhead, we're going to add one more. And then I've added a bit of redundancy through here, so we are good to go. So this should provide us what we need in terms of overhead. Look at that. Our production is now at 680. Now, I am curious. I think it's always valuable to test this out. So we are going to use play it to change our time of day to night. Now, what that's going to do here is drop our temperature even lower than it already is. And two degrees Fahrenheit is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing here today, but we are at freezing. So it's actually, even though it looks bad outside, it's very pleasant. So this would be miserable. This is so cold that, you know, maybe your tears from being outside freeze to your face. Maybe that's extreme, <laughs> but, but you get the feeling it would be very unpleasant. Very, very unpleasant. Now that we've let this go, though, we can see that our heating availability is fine. Now, if it weren't, I might just be OK with it dipping into electric heat a little bit if necessary. We've got to remember we've got we're producing a ton of electricity now from our solar plant. I am very curious, though. How does our solar plant look in the winter? All right. All the panels look like they're covered with snow. <laughs> well, what can you do with it's just that is the way it is. Uh, hopefully there's someone going around and, and shoveling these off. <laughs> All right. So now we are good to go and the city is moving. The one thing we need to think about is what happens when it snows. So right now we have no snow dump. So if we come back in here, turn on our weather and really crank the snow up, we're going to start to see that our roads fill up with snow and you can see that our coverage for snow, not good. And our condition, I'm going to let this go for a minute just to see how things go. OK, and it didn't take long for basically every road in the city to look like this in the entire county. So we are going to need to add in some snow dumps. We've got some problems. What this looks like in actuality is that all of these roads are just completely covered in snow. So let's go ahead and start adding some snow dumps. So these are going to be under the road condition menu and we are going to start adding some of these in. The weird thing about the game is we're looking at these snow dumps as as places that are unique in and of themselves. 
in reality, I would expect most of these to, to be parking lots somewhere, or they would push it into the water, you know, as, as bad as that, that, that might sound. So that's, that's what I would expect to see. We're going to add in some near our city services complex out here. And then we're going to need some of these basically in every single community or at least close to it. So out here, we might have one. Now, the nice thing about these assets is that they conform a bit with the terrain. Now, the interesting thing is you have to have water here. <laughs> I don't really understand that, but we will uh, we will listen to the game. We'll put water pipes right underneath the road, right where they belong. And then I'm going to go in to move it and raise this up to road height. Seems like it's a little bit off. Maybe it would have been better to conform the terrain a bit. Uh, you know, for the most part, I'm okay with it, but this building here looks terrible. I'm curious if I were to just take a brush that's fairly small and, oh, I can do that. So this works for me. I'm okay just bumping these buildings up and then they can dump these down. That feels pretty natural to me. So we will do that. Looking good enough. <laughs> so with that, let's let's see what is happening now. If we look at our condition, not that much. <laughs> Obviously, we haven't really added much in terms of coverage. You can see that the plows have made their way over to Belmont. They're starting to get to Shorewood, but we need a lot more of the snow dumps if we're going to cover the entire city. Let's add one over here in Ashland as well. And I'm going to add this one. Why don't we even add two over here near the power plant? I should say near the decommissioned power plant because this thing's turned off. So this is a good location for it. What I like about this location is we have direct access to the highway. And it's interesting. I'm seeing lots of these little issues now. And this is because of the conversion where we're having a little bit of tearing. So just things to keep in mind. There are some other small things that we're going to want to take a look at as well. There are some trees that for whatever reason don't have a winter texture like this one. If you really cared, you could go through and try to bob these things out of existence. That is one way to do it. In fact, I have a winter. There we go. It looks a little bit better. So all things that you might want to consider. I've noticed that there are a couple of custom trees that I have that just happen to do this. The other thing is you could just not worry about it. <laughs> That's probably where I'm going to be at for the most part. All right. So let's we've got two facilities over here, one over here. We are going to give Belmont and Fairchild their own dedicated facilities if we can. Now, the airport should probably have one of these. So what we're gonna do, wow, there's a lot of traffic back there, uh, is we'll, we'll place that off from this road. I wanna look at our terrain. So we'll look at our contour lines and perhaps we can sneak one back here. We will add a road back here and you see that there's a little bit of elevation, maybe three or four meters. I'm gonna leave angle on then we're going to pop this up so that it's at terrain height. And then I'm going to meander this back a bit and send this back here. So I'm going to remove the trees and then I'll manually adjust this. Now, is this the height of realism? I'm not sure <laughs> that it is. If you think about it, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty significant slope. Let's take a look and see what we're looking at in terms of slopes. We're at 9.5, probably not great, but I think we'll roll with it and we'll add in another snow dump up here. There we go. Now that's going to be very, very, very beneficial up here because we're so far away from everything else. Now I'm curious, where are these, where are they going? That's such a cool looking asset and they're clipping along. The road already looks clear. Now that I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we're actually, I guess we have no condition on the highway. Very, very interesting. So these roads are cleared. They are going for the arterials first, it looks like. Maybe that's just perception and not reality. Yeah, it's not reality because over here, we're not seeing that. They're just kind of getting wherever they get to, which is fine as well. Not the way it works in reality. In reality, there are snow routes. The snow routes generally follow transit lines first. So if you've ever wondered if you're on a local street and uh, you get your, your street plowed often and you have a, a bus route right there, that's why, because the buses are the very first thing that are cleared, the bus routes, uh, along with any bus pads that the city might maintain, those are getting cleared first for accessibility reasons. So then the second set would be the arterials, the most 
heavily traveled roads in the community, and then third, the collectors. And local roads might not be cleared at all. So it's kind of a, one of those things. And that, that's at least how it works where I am. One of the reasons for that is you'll salt the roads at the same time. And in my area, we have a lot of concerns about water quality. But in my area, the reason why we care so much is some of our water wells have become so salty that if you're on a salt restricted diet, you can't actually drink the water from your tap. So when that happened, it kind of you know set off alarm bells in people's in people's minds. We've got to we've got to change something. All right, enough about that. And I want to focus on this a little bit. So we've got a problem here. And if you look, there are some streets that are covered with snow and you might just think to yourself oh that's normal that's the way it's supposed to be they haven't plowed here yet well let's add in some of our snow dumps and we'll see if that fixes things i have a sneaking suspicion that it will not we are going to add in our snow dump in this general area because this is going to be a very valuable location for it that said there's also the target that we haven't built yet and we need to contend with so we've just got to be really thoughtful about these things. And the way that we're going to handle this is just to extend a road out here into undeveloped territory. And it's funny. We have these trees through here. I bet you they could actually stay there if we're being completely reasonable. But we're going to take, take them out anyway. So the reason I say that is uh, what would prevent you from having a tree in there? I guess it would make it more challenging to dump the snow, but normally snow is dumped in parking lots or things of that nature where there are obstacles and it just, it works out just fine. All right, uh, we're gonna add in some more over here. Now this is the ideal location for it. We're in an area that is industrial in nature. So I would expect that you would see this sort of thing out here. We're gonna add this here because we have access to this bridge and really reasonably that highway. We'll add maybe two of them, and hopefully this could uh, serve not just Johnson Creek or Van Buren, but also Otter Lake and some of the things over here as well. And this road is functioning as an arterial, so I'm going to place these on the side road here. There we go. Now, I do want to have one dedicated to Belmont. Right now, it's kind of splitting between that one that's out here. Unless we add one more out here, I feel like we need to add one that's dedicated to Belmont. And it's been a while since we're over here, so let's just check it out and enjoy the views of Belmont. Now, I can imagine this existing behind the city hall, potentially, in a small town like this, where maybe their public works facilities would be right back here anyway. So is this ideal to have this here? Probably not, but it's it's it'll be fine. We have to accept a bit of imperfection, but where we're not gonna accept it is down in Van Buren. Now, I wanna let this go for a minute. We're gonna run this and see how our condition changes. And as this begins to improve, I wanna take a look at some of our custom road assets because there are some concerns I have with one of them in particular. Okay, and not all of the roads have been cleared just yet, but I think that we're far enough along that I can demonstrate my point. So these roads are cleared. This one is not, nor is this one. So let's take a look and actually see if they have been cleared. This one has been, and this one hasn't been, yet they both look covered with snow. Now, these roads, if you'll recall, are some of those cobblestone streets that we've been using in uh, Van Buren for quite some time. So we are gonna go into Ron, and I have Alt-Q as the hotkey. So what we can do with this is convert over these roads all at once. So I'll click on these, and what I think I wanna replace these cobblestone streets with is one of the urban roads. And then we just hit replace all. 20 minutes later. Okay, and that was a bit nerve wracking, and it took a couple of minutes, but what it has done is converted every single road. Now we don't have the problems with those streets being covered with snow. So I know that uh, for, for many of you, having custom roads will be the way to go and you like having custom roads, they can look really nice, but you just gotta be aware of the shortcomings. If there is not a winter asset, a uh, winter texture, you can have issues like that. So now we should be fully functional and uh, we should see our snow situation improving, looking very good. And from a visual standpoint, we are in a good place. So next up is 
focusing on this area a little bit. So there were a couple of things pointed out in the comments that I want to address. First of all, Imperfect Geo said the space that I designated is Emerson Park right here. I actually said I was going to make a commercial use. So this is interesting because uh, first of all, I, I think either would be appropriate in this location if I'm if I'm being completely honest with you. That said, I bet you that the landowner for this area would come out swinging if we designated a large commercial area right here. The reason why is Target backed out of building because there was not enough commercial demand. And now we're almost at a place where we can build our Target only to see the city zone a gigantic uh, or plan. This would be in the comprehensive plan, plan for a gigantic space right here to be commercial in nature. So the property owners, uh, that especially of large urban uh, properties, are well connected and they get involved in these property processes. That's why if you aren't involved in your community, just know that they are. <laughs> so uh, if you don't like the way that they are, are, are looking at your community, maybe you should uh, get involved yourself. You can certainly have an impact. And because there are so few people who do it, you'd be surprised the amount of in, uh, impact that you can make in your community. So we are going to take this and I think that we're gonna use this for a park space. We are going to do something unique though and extend this down here and then have pathways through a park and, and kind of have the park surrounded by some uses. So and this is a good time to point this out. So Cameron Hart pointed out that there was an issue here with the tram road and I'm seeing it. It's especially apparent in the winter. Uh, there's a, a node issue here and look at that. I click on it. I'll delete that node and it'll fix it. So that was a remnant of the planning process over here. So now let's get started on Emerson Park. And the very first thing I want to do is extend our uses along here and I want to add a pedestrian connection through here so that we can still access the park from this road. And now I'm just gonna steal some uses from around the area. We don't need to get super prescriptive. This one I don't like. Somehow we had an old use. Whoops, <laughs> sneak through here. So it has that historic facade, but there we go. That, that That's uh, what I meant to copy and it looks fine. So let's just load this up. And in fact, we don't even need to get super creative about this. We can just grab a whole block from somewhere else and move it on over there. So I'm going to hit move it, hold down shift and control C this. And now I'll take this whole block and paste it right there. And we will steal another block from over here. Hit escape, move it, M, click shift, 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 control C. And there we go. And then again, we'll use move it to adjust as necessary. Now I place these backwards. <laughs> so forgive me, forgive me. So I'm just undoing this and now I'm going to hold down alt. We'll just spin this around like that, pull this close. And now we'll grab this one building and get this fixed. The power of mods. It's why they are, they are so powerful and so important. Control C this building as well. We're just going to clone this and try to make this look like one larger building. There we go. Now, one of the criticisms that, well, and actually, we're not going to do that. That's two Whole Foods. So <laughs> we'll uh, call a mulligan on that one. So one of the criticisms lobbied on this street is that there are no commercial uses. And that's true. But there's a reason for that. I want to use some commercial blocks to add in commercial uses here to ensure that we have a nice mix of uses. Now we've got to be really careful with these. And what you'll see is I've added a bunch of these block services for zone buildings. So if you go into a normal build and just add these in and you don't have themes set for your build, these will spawn in and they look crazy. So keep that in mind. You can really only do this if you have building themes manager enabled and themes specified through your entire community. That said, if you do have these, we are, you can, you can have mixed use buildings. So we have these service blocks for everything from offices to industrial. If you really wanted to do that, uh, residential commercial, uh, both high density commercial and low density. Now to make this function, we've got to think about uh, the sound that the commercial uses will generate. So because of that, we're going to go with level one, small, low density commercial. So 
low density commercial level one we're going to add that through here and what you'll notice with these blocks is that there's an arrow the arrow is where folks would load so we're going to spin this around and then i just want to look for some buildings that we can add these to and i can just place these in here and now these are commercial buildings so folks will walk in here to the commercial use and uh, it will function just like a commercial building so the one thing i mentioned the sound let's take a look at what this has done you can't really tell because this is already loud because it is on a tram line so let's just pop one over here and see what it does you can see that it has created a bit of noise so you've got to be careful with these and the reason why i went low density is i know that i could get away with one basically if i went with high density we're going to take a look at this even level one high density and then we look at our sound here i have a feeling this is going to be much more intense i don't know why that's not creating a whole bunch of noise but that's interesting that almost changes the way i look at these because I just, oh, 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 as I add that one, it's no longer happy. It looks about the same. It doesn't look like there's a significant difference. So I guess in that case, I just don't wanna overdo my commercial. So we'll go with lower density commercial. So I'm gonna go through now and I just wanna add in some of these blocks. And again, you gotta push this into the building. And we've got another Whole Foods. In fact, we've got a whole block full of Whole Foods. <laughs> so. And then some of these are dedicated apartment complexes. So in those ones, we wouldn't want to do that. But look at this. Here's a Chipotle. Now, the other fun thing is this building wraps around a corner. So we could add in our service block here and then spin this around. And now people will enter through the corner as well. There we go. Mixed use buildings. And if we look at our sound, all the way along there. And that's how you can tell they're mixed use. We've got a couple over here that we didn't do as well, so why don't we just get these? And for all of the Canadian viewers, we'll make sure that Timmy's is, uh, is totally functional. Finally, a mixed use city. That's what we need, that's what we need. So now through here, we're gonna need to do a little bit more to make this feel like more of a place. So I want to finish out this park now. So we'll get rid of these couple of trees and we have some new assets. So we've got these lovely winter assets that are in our park menu and we have some unique buildings as well. So why don't we just place all these and we'll take a look. Okay, so what we've got here, looks like a nice little campfire site with a bunch of trees around it. This one, whoa, I put two of them there. This is the fire pit park right here. We have a snowman park. Just a normal park, but with snowmen, kind of cool. Here, ice sculpture park, that's pretty cool too. And then here we've got a sledding hill, which is nothing like any sledding hills I've ever been to, but I still like it. And then we've got curling park, huge, especially up north. And then a skating rink, which I just love this one. This one has so many applications. And then a ski lodge, obviously inappropriate right here and the cross country skiing park, which uh, this is very elaborate. <laughs> I've never seen one like that either. So we're gonna get rid of a few of these that I think maybe we shouldn't have here. And I think we'll keep these ones. We'll work these in in a way that makes sense. I also wanna take a look at our unique buildings because there's a new snow tab here as well. Now we have an ice hockey arena. Why this building is not available in the base game, I, I don't really know, I don't get it. So this is something that I think would make a ton of sense here. So we are gonna place this right on this arterial and look at this, it's a fully functional ice hockey arena. The nice thing about this is you can imagine that the high schoolers could come down here and this is where they might go. The high school I went to was close to our ice hockey arena, but not right there. We didn't have that available to us directly. So this is a perfect location for it. And I'm really excited to bring that through here. So with this, the other asset that we have available to us is our Snow Castle restaurant. So it's kind of interesting. We could make this, uh, this some sort of highway attraction, I think. It, that might be where you might expect to see it. There are a number of other things like, ooh, ski resort. We gotta fill a snow dump. Spa hotel is collecting snow. So maybe we'll just 
We'll just keep our snowfall intensity up for a while to unlock some of these buildings. Uh, the sleigh ride, only use boiler stations. Ooh, I don't know that we can do much about that. Uh, snowboarding, weekly education has to be expensive. We could, we could cheese the game a bit there. And then we have our Santa Claus workshop. Complete 20 instances of the tram line. Interesting. Christmas tree only used geothermal heating plants for heating. I thought that we were doing that, so I don't I don't know why we haven't unlocked this. And then lastly, the Igloo Hotel. Construct oh, this is gonna be one of those where you have to basically construct a little bit of everything and then it will finally unlock for you. So very interesting. We have lightning. I don't understand that. <laughs> I might have to look through a theme mixer to see why we have lightning when we have snow. Uh, that's kind of a weird one. So I don't actually see that in here. So I'm taking a look and I thought maybe I could figure out exactly why we are seeing lightning and I don't know why. So if any of you have an idea and how I can make it stop lightning in the winter, <laughs> let me know. Because <laughs> I've seen it. Well, I've seen lightning in the winter. It's very rare, exceedingly rare. And uh, it's just, yeah, it, it's not like this. <laughs> Oh, well. All right. So here we go. We've got this and I'm going to extend a road back maybe around this facility might be something I would expect to see. I also want to make some connections between our apartments and this area. And we're going to add in a path all the way through here with some uh, pedestrian actuated crossings because I would expect to see that as well. So through here, we're just going to go with a normal road. So I'll steal it from right here. And we're just going to loop around here. So we'll turn all of our snap twos back on. And now reasonably, I don't need a pedestrian connection through here, but I think we're going to add one anyway. And I'm just going to turn on the grid and we'll run this alongside here. So the nice thing is we don't need a pedestrian actuator because that would likely be right here, but we still need these connections through to our apartment. And I think that's something that they would push for anyway. There we go. Now, the interesting thing is I thought we had a fence around here and I don't see a fence anymore. I might expect to see that now. Look at all of these snow covered roads. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. So what we're going to do now with this area is run a path along behind these buildings. And that is if we don't need some sort of drive. And it looks like we do. The garages are behind here. So we will add in one of our alleyways. You know, I don't want to disrupt the flow of our park, so I'm going to extend this out. This will be a long alleyway, and I'm sure that there would be uh, fire that might have a problem with this. I think we're going to let it go this time, though. Every now and then you'll see an area that you just go, how did that get approved? This will be one of those areas. Now, through here, we've kind of got all of this stuff just kind of jammed into place. I don't love that. So we're going to place some of this here. And the fun thing is we added this extra sidewalk here, but that doesn't mean that we can't have some of our uses focused right along this sidewalk. It's going to allow it. And I love that. So that this to me is a much more appropriate place. We've got the parking here. This could be used for not just this venue right here, but also for some of these parks. And that makes a ton of sense to me. Now for this, I'm going to spin this around. I am really hoping that I can do something a little bit cheeky here. So I want to see if I can move this spawn point to a road. It's not, it's not going to be okay with that, which is fine. We'll add in an invisible road or a pedestrian path and that will do the trick for us. And we can use move it M and just spin this around with alt and we're fine. I just don't want there to be cars coming down here. So I will adjust this as well. We don't need a signal here. Actually we do. I actually, oh, we don't need that car. <laughs> the signal will allow folks coming from the apartments to walk across here. So I do like the idea of this in hindsight. It's one of those lovely serendipitous things that just happens every now and then that you in the game are just going to be thrilled about. And we'll add a bit of an arch here. Node controller this to square it up, make it look a little bit nicer. And then we'll come through, use TMPE to remove all of our cars here ban all vehicles. There we go. And now you have pedestrians that could easily walk back and forth through here. We do have a signal which gives them the priority which they deserve. So very, very good. 
All right, I just reoriented this. I didn't really love the way that that was turning out. Now for this, we are going to again take this and I'm going to face this one away from the road so that if you were up at the top and you were looking at the view that you were going to take in, you would take in the view of the curling, which and, and then you wouldn't be sliding towards the road. So kind of a variety of reasons why you might want this to face this way instead. Now here, <laughs> I think we're going to calm down the, the winter weather because <laughs> it's a little much. If you have an idea for this one, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. But for the time being, I'll just leave it go. Uh, and now I, I want to figure out something for this cross country skiing park. So I think again, I'm going to back this off just a little ways, and then we're going to add in a pedestrian path along here. So the main thought behind this is right now people are using this park to walk, and I would like to prevent that if possible. Not the end of the world, but it seems a little weird to me that people would walk through the park here. Uh, this is totally packed full of cars, and it's got a big billboard there, which bugs me. So we're going to get rid of the billboard using Bob if we can. Because we're a classier city than that. We do not allow gigantic billboards in the city. Yeah, advertising in a public park. I know you see it sometimes, especially like baseball diamonds. You might expect to see it, but I just, uh, for me, there's, we don't need to do that. <laughs> we, we don't need to do that. There we go. And now I'm going to add in some landscaping around here. And we have some really lovely winter trees. So I'm just going to type in winter. And look at these. That is lovely. So just because it's winter and you shouldn't be planting trees in the winter doesn't mean that we're not going to do it. <laughs> so we are going to make this feel like a separate space, a dedicated space. Oh, the plow is still going down here. Well, I guess that's a thing. <laughs> All right. Very good. The other thing that we could do is add in a pedestrian connection. You see that there are folks walking here. No reason why we couldn't also add in a path through here if we wanted to. And I don't know that this one's actually going to function. Uh, it wanted to clip right here. So I'm going to give it what it wants and we'll see if that does the trick. So then I want to see if this is a working path and I didn't even need to because there's already someone walking. So that did work. Feeling good about that. So nice little park here. This, I think this would be a community gem. It would be a very important place in the city. So we've got a couple of other places to fill in. And I would expect that through here, we're just kind of seeing more of the same higher density stuff. So on this end, maybe we have some more of these larger buildings filling in the rear of the block here. Mostly just straight residential. And then through here, we have more of the same of these lower density uh, duplex sort of properties right here. So that's what we're going to do. We'll just add in some more duplexes back here, upgrade these roads, and these should just be local streets. So we'll steal a local street from over here. We'll make sure that all of our snap twos are on. And then the other thing that we're going to need to think about is I don't want to make that connection through here. This is an arterial. So we're just going to have a turnaround right here. Through here, we will add a road and then we'll make a connection through. So hindsight being 2020, I think this would be something where the planners look and they go, I wish this would have been straightened out. Not much we can do about it at this point. So we'll just send that through like that. And then this one, I think the, the road's going to end right here. And in fact, we're using a, a driveway. We'll upgrade that and call a little bit of a mulligan on this building. Scoot this over just a bit. So I typed in modern townhome because I know that we are not using all of the modern townhomes available to us. So let's see what we can do. This is the right end. We will pop this over here. We've got a bunch of middles. And then our left end. So I believe that with these assets, the intention is actually to kind of mash these together. And then I'm going to come through here. And this isn't necessarily the height of realism, but we are going to line these objects up and hopefully distribute them a little bit better. There we go. And now that we have that control C and alt to rotate these around. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think I, I think that's too much. So we've got these smaller townhomes and I think that they may be more appropriate. If we're backing these out now, we would need some sort of path through here. There are doors in between and that's okay. I think we can work around that. 
So we are going to do that. These are just going to be very, very tight. And then we'll need some landscaping along here. Um, and I think that what we'll do is we'll just steal this and place this right along here to block some of the road noise and the lights. And this is very tight. In fact, oh, these actually have garages behind them. So if this were going to be anything, it should probably be a road. So now we're kind of getting into, into silly land where maybe I'm getting a little bit too deep into this, but I'm already committed. So <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. We'll convert these over, have these narrow little streets here, and then I will pull these closer. We'll get rid of the paths and through here, I'm going to add in a road. There we go. So that should do the trick here. We'll need to scoot this over if we can, holding down alt to keep this nice and straight. And then we'll hold on alt on this end to really straighten it up. And truthfully, I could see there being a need for some sort of path connection right here to allow the fire department to get through here if necessary. Otherwise, I need to have a hammerhead or a cul-de-sac ball back here. I don't know that that would be great. So um, all things to think about if this were a real development. Okay, so that's pretty good. That will do the trick for us. It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> so... What we're going to do here is pull these forward just a bit. Oh, so we get the trees out of the sidewalk, hopefully, and then we'll, we'll call it. Now, that makes me want to reconsider this whole deal right here. And the way that we're going to reconsider it is we'll just have some more of these duplexes. There we go. I think this is something that we could probably live with. And over here, we're going to just have larger lots, but we've got to get some water pipes underneath here and re reasonably we'll just fill out the rest of our development area. It's not all that large. There we go. That will do the trick and a little bit of redundancy as well. We have certainly come a long way right here. Now through here, we'll go with these townhomes that we were using already and loop these back around. And then I want to think about some city services because if there's anything that this entire area is missing right now, it's a real serious consideration of city services. And since we have all this space back here, I'm going to add in a small park. Now, the funny thing is it's going to allow me to get away with one. If I rotate this just right, it will allow me to do this. So I am going to come through with our surface tool and get rid of the center so it just looks like a park that fits well within here and now we have a fully functional park here folks will still be able to, get to use it and it's going to boost our land values and hopefully provide some benefit to everyone back here now we need city services we have almost nothing over here if we look at everything from healthcare to death care to education i guess education we're a little bit more okay with but Everything else is a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and really start to think about all of our services over here. Look at our fire coverage. It is bad. So we're going to add in a little bit of everything on some of these side streets before we start to expand every everything else back a bit because this is an absolute necessity. Okay, so now we have fire and police, and this is a clinic. I think they fit really nice through here. What we are missing is parking, and we're going to add that. And then we still need death care, so we will take a look at that. And an interesting thing that could look really fitting through here would be this medical laboratory. I do think that you could see something like that back here. So why don't we why don't we do that? That'll be one of the employers in the area is this medical laboratory and the height of realism, a cryo preservatory. <laughs> now we'll go with something a little bit more fitting. And truthfully, even this clinic, I think that we could have gone with something a little bit bigger if we wanted to. But I will add in a crematorium over here. Back through here, we're going to add in just a real quick access, an alleyway sort of deal, if you will. 
and I'm going to take these parking spaces and hide them back here so we can have some nicer uses that make a bit more sense around here. We'll add in just a bit more residential. Yeah, I like that a lot more. So now there's that transition, and what you see is that we've got a node of activity and density here. Transitions down to some uh, higher density. These are still much closer than over here. Where we spread apart those duplexes until we get to our Costco. So a gradation of density that I think makes sense. And uh, over here, it's even more extreme. We've got our fourplexes, uh, or, or I guess are they four or eight? I'm curious. Let's look at this. It's four. So uh, we've got our fourplexes over here, and uh, we're spreading those out even more. So you get four units, but some space so i'm appreciating that I, I, I think that looks nice so for the rest of our coverage let's just make sure that our coverage is good with each of these uses fire protection's good now our crime rates low our health care is wonderful death care acceptable i think we're in a good place i think we're in a very very good place so with that in mind, uh, obviously education is something that we could take a look at. Let's look at that as well. We could use another elementary school and another high school. That'll that'll have to be a future project. For the time being, I think we're gonna leave that alone. Now, I am gonna go ahead and again, mirror some of our uses over here as we fill in. And then we'll give everyone what they absolutely want over here, and that is a dog park. Everyone loves a dog park. The universal developer concession. <laughs> there we go. Right there. Now, around here, we should do something else as well. And I think we're going to go... This building over here is a bit more substantial. I've used this in a couple of other locations. It's not going to fit well. This is one of those awkward spots... And you sometimes wonder, you know, I think we, we spoke a while back about potentially having a cul-de-sac back here. I kind of ruined that concept as soon as I added in this medical uh, laboratory. And I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. So what we are going to do, though, is break up this block. Height of Realism, just scoot this over when it's in your way. And we'll add an alleyway through here as another sort of roadway access through this area. Now, reasonably, you could have an apartment back here if you had the access like this. This could be part of a, a complex of sorts. So we could do that. The one thing I want to do to make sure this isn't used as a major cut through is to lower the speeds. So we will do that. And we'll expand this here. Okay, so I got a little bit creative here, and the idea is basically that this is all one building. I don't know that it's working exactly as I had hoped, but we're still trying. Sometimes that's all you can do. So the big issue here is that the rooftop mechanicals are a little bit wonky. So I just drop this down, we'll lower that, or we'll raise that up one, and I think it's, for the most part, working okay now. I'm gonna pull that forward, and then we'll add pedestrian access back here, and this could be some sort of a park for the residents of this facility. There we go. I am feeling very, very, very good about this. And again, we will add in some trees along here to decorate and make this feel like a bit more of a real place. Uh, there has been a, a number of comments that I've seen as well about some of the signalization. It has gotten a bit extreme. So we are going to go ahead and reduce our signalization through here. We'll add stops to some of these because we do not want to disrupt the traffic flow. Now this is an arterial to arterial connection. So we will add the, the stop there. And this was a pedestrian actualization, which is fine. So I'm just gonna set this to be a priority road. Oh, and I can't do that because we have TMPE, bummer. So that's where uh, going back and forth between a, a modded and non-modded build can sometimes burn me. <laughs> All right, so I've given priority to this arterial. So except for where there are arterial to arterial connections, we basically have stop signs only. And then right here again, we've got signals at both of these. And this is again a nice collector connection through there. No need to signalize these. And then the same thing here. 
So this will speed up everything, improve our traffic flow, which is a good thing. All right, feeling good about that. Obviously, there's always more that we could do, and I might I might stream one of these days to, to resolve some of these things, because these, these are the kinds of things that I think are best handled in a stream. Okay, so that was our tram road. I just wanted to make sure that the tram has priority, and then we'll signalize this junction here so that, uh, that we don't have queues of trams building anywhere. So I think we're in a good spot there, and we need to take inventory of what we've done. We missed the spot, but that's okay. We'll have a brief city tour. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, I, I know that many people wish that there was a change of seasons that would occur naturally, but you know, that's where a modding community comes through. And I get why there is not a change of seasons in the game. That's that's something you, you almost have to program that up front. That said, the ability for us to do it on our own, make our own unique places, and then maintain this. I'm very curious to know how this park is gonna look after we convert back to a temperate build, but that's something we get to worry about in the future. I know the snowman park would look bad, that's why we didn't use it, <laughs> but but I think this could be okay. So I think we're gonna leave it here. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, bye-bye.